All right, so we're back here, and we have a few things to do. Um, we want to, let's see, yeah, we want to parse groups uh, would be the short version here, right? these types of groups. And we're going to split this into two things, I suspect. Yeah, so one one thing to consider here is do we want also this lowercase group, for example, right? Probably we do. <clears throat> so in some ways here, I mean, this is a very open kind of parse, right? We, we can have a, an upper identifier, up, upper symbol is what I call it. We can have a lower symbol. An upper and lower here refers to the uh, initial letter. Um, we can also start with an at sign. Um, I don't know any any other shapes this would take, to be honest. So what I think we can do, maybe we should use a colon here, to be completely honest. You know? Maybe we should use colons and then just read until a colon. I mean, what's the point with anything anything else, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, we're going to do colons. Um, I'm going to essentially take this file here. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this that's just called uh, simple. Uh, here and we are going to uh, set file type Ruby um, I'm using Ruby syntax highlighting it has nothing to do with Ruby in reality it's just that you know whatever um, and then we're gonna toss colons in some of these and here I really only want a few because this is gonna be our test file and here we could do this we could have a comment here absolutely that sounds fine this test file will um, stress a few of these, so I think we're going to be fine with that identifier is what I'm going to say here. And then these are going to link to identifier here. And then we're going to remove these. Um, let's just say elixir eh, old in variable, let's say. I mean, it doesn't really matter what we put here. The idea is simply, you know, there's something we can test, right? This obviously needs colons. This should have a colon and this should have a colon. This file should parse correctly. That's, that's going to be our test. Of course, we're going to start with smaller parts than that. Um, let's see here. So here, we want to we want to just parse something until a colon. I, we'll see sort of what that means, I guess, right? Yeah, I'm starting to kind of rethink this a little bit, right? But not necessarily. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to just see what you know, what this actually turns into, right? It's at the end of the day, you just have to do this piece by piece, just as you know you do with literally everything else. So parse group parse group. Yeah. Is this a group? I mean, it's a rule, right? But we have called it groups. Oh, uh, yeah, rules is actually what we want, right? Let's just say rules, highlights, highlights. Highlights are a mapping of group names to group colors. Yeah, yeah I don't mind that, that, that seems fine. Um, parse, highlight, 
right? So parsing a highlight is going to be uh, this is a pointer, obviously. Um, let's just put this at the top. Um, so this is going to be a tokenizer. And this returns a group, uh, the name of the group, which is a group group name. And what was that? We call this a group color. And a group color is a root color pair or a group name. So that's going to be fine. And this could, of course, return an error, right? Tokenization uh, expectation error. Sorry about this. Yeah, hang on. Sorry about that. Uh, I am a slave to technology. That's all I'll say about this. Um, so let's see here. We have our group name, group color, and some kind of expectation error, possibly. Right? Um, here, we, we probably want to say, OK, uh, the thing that comes first is obviously the name. right? So here, we could just say straight up name equals parse group name All right that takes a tokenizer or return and then we could say tokenization tokenizer expect uh, tokenizer tokenization dot colon or return and we don't need to capture this of course because it's, you know expecting this colon it, it does nothing here uh, and so on and here we can skip spaces that's reasonable certainly uh, we could also skip tabs tokenization tab that's not a bad idea in general <clears throat> parse group name doesn't exist we're gonna make that of course um, and let's see here. Here we want we want to parse a group color, right? So here we can actually say color equals parse group color, right? Or return. And here we say name, color, and nil, right? And now we really only have to define these. So parse group name. It's going to be a procedure that takes a tokenizer. Um, let's not fill in this yet. So, um, sure, expectation error. We return a group name of some sort. And let's just say parse group is also a procedure right, with a tokenizer, etc. Right, we're going to stop that out for now. And let's pull these up. And now we can just parse the group name. And what is a group name? Well, it can be one of several things, right? So we can either be very specific about this, right? Um, or we can kind of leave it open and read until the colon, like I said, right? Because the colon is there in order to basically say, you know, here's a good delimiter, right? A group name should not be able to have a, a colon. so. Those are the rules we are setting, at least. So we could just try to do that. And, and let's do that, right? So let's say name uh, here would be tokenization, tokenizer, read string until. Um, and here we take the tokenizer. 
and I think here we we have end markers, which is a list of strings, right? So string here, and we just say colon in there or return. And this returns uh, an expectation error, expect exactly as you would expect. Um, and here we can just return group name on name, really, uh, with nil here. And that should be it. Let's see here, cannot assign. Um, let's see here, what is... Ah, right. Sure, okay. Um, name string is defined as that, and here we return name string like this. Because remember here, the, this value is actually a group name, which is not a string. It's um, a distinct string. So they are, they are different, obviously. Uh, and now we have a group name, right? Um, if we parse a group color, what does that actually mean? Well, we have a few formats, actually. Uh, it might seem, we, well, I mean, it's obvious we have a few formats. We have long plus long. We have single. We have short plus short, and we will have obviously only short as well. Um, so let's see here what we want to do. We want to a group color. Oh yeah, it can be several different things as well. Right. Uh, it can actually be a group name. So here, what we could do is we can check for a quote first. Actually, we could try to parse a... Oh, yeah, okay. No, no, no. This is actually fine. So let's see, t say that T is tokenization. Uh, we could do tokenizer. We could do next token here, but I don't really want to do that. Um, we could do Do we have our one of? No, we do not. Now let's do a a peak maybe, or next token. Yeah, let's do a next token. And this returns several things. So here you can actually see that uh, this will not work with or return. Uh, we have OK, etc., etc. here instead. So we return a source token. Uh, let's say source token. Uh, the index of that, and then uh, got token like this. If we didn't get a token, I really want to return some kind of expectation error here, right? Because it's not going to uh, work at all. Tokenization dot um, expected one of, etc. Let's see here. We could add a new. Because here I'm actually a little bit unexpected and the file is what I actually want here.
tokenization tokenizer location is actually a, a function I want. Let's make that function. Um, it's not rare to find these cases, by the way, where you, you kind of want to make a new one. Uh, tokenizer location. Tokenizer takes a... Here we don't need a pointer, actually. But it doesn't matter, to be honest. This returns a location. We should be always be able to create this, so I don't. I'm not worried necessarily about this. Uh, this takes a line. Ah, we can see that there. Um, line is tokenizer. Line um, source file. We don't know anything about actually. A source file might not be. You know, eh, whatever. We're gonna leave it like that. Um, now this is now taking that source token declare, but not used. That's fine. Expected end of file is now here, and this is good, right? Um, here we actually have to handle all of these cases, right? Which is good. Oh wow. That is just sort of, hmm. The auto formatter is not doing very well with that one. Uh, let's just leave that. I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, and here we obviously have the same thing. Now source token is just unused. We have a source token here. And what we actually want to do is uh, switch T and source token dot token. Because remember here, a source token um, is it's uh, a token with source information, basically. So here, if we get a lower symbol or tokenization upper symbol, return. Uh, do do something to do um, if we get a this is the group color right if we get a, a string right we want to use that as the the foreground Basically, color is equal to uh, color dot color is equal to a root color pair where the foreground is equal to uh, t dot value. In fact, I think. This is a hex color, so here we want to say hex color like this in that case. So when we have a lower or an upper symbol, what can we do here, right? T dot, it does not go, it's not gonna work. We should separate these. Here we can actually access value, which is a string that is the actual symbol, right? So let's do this. I think that's gonna be better. Uh, here, if we find a lower symbol, we actually just want to um, return the color, right? Um, group color, which can be group name. So here we're gonna say group name 
t dot value like this and nil, I think yes, uh, and we can do that the same with upper value upper symbol. And here we do have to read more. And uh, here we actually, we actually want to return some kind of error, right? Because we clearly have not succeeded uh, in this particular case, maybe. Uh, we could return nil here. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, this here, we might want to Yeah, okay, let's do this. So we are re we've read read our string here. And if we read a comma we have more. We have a background value, right? We could put a put that up there, I guess, but no, not really. Let's um, should only end up here if we parse the color string. So here we are checking for possible background color values. So, tokenization, tokenizer. Um, <laughs> here we could expect and then simply not return the error, right? Um, yeah, let's do that. Tokenizer expect tokenizer comma. We don't or return here. In fact, we just say comma comma error, right? If this is not nil, we return whatever we have, right? Otherwise, clearly there's we found a comma, right? So we're, we're gonna read another uh, string here, right? Uh, here we can skip, yeah, tokenization, tokenizer, skip any of spaces, uh, tokenization, string or return when we do have a comma we do expect this we do want to return an error if this is not the case right uh, and here we we want to capture that token right uh, so we can say t token string token like this color background hex color string token 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 tokenization string value yes it should be fine. Has no field. Right. Mm, yeah. What happens if I say this, though? In that case, right? No, no. We don't really have this. Let's say, okay, let's leave that there. I have an idea, root color pair. We just do this. This is a root color pair, which we're filling in. Like this. And here we can actually do foreground e equals instead, right? Like this. And here we can say root color pair background. 
now it's very clear which one is actually doing what here, right? And here we can say color equals root color pair like this. And then we return it. We could also just say root color pair. This actually makes it clearer what's going on down here, right? Because you can see, hey, this is definitely the code path we go through when we return a root color pair. So that's all fine, okay. Uh, I like that. That works. Now, uh, let's write some tests for some of these things. I'm, we're going to start here with the parse group color. I think that would be um, test parse group color. I think it's going to be the most, let's quote unquote, uh, let's say interesting of the, the ones that we have. Um, so this is a parse group color only. Let's see that I... Let's see that that makes sense. Right. Yeah, this makes sense. Uh, and here, maybe we want, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is going to be fine like this. Um, here we actually want a raw string and then having, we want the quotes actually in there. <clears throat> right, so here we have our color. I think this is fine. Let's see here. G root color pair is what I need, of course. Root color. And we want this obviously to be the foreground, right? So foreground equals this. Let's make other tests because, I mean, we don't want to uh, only have one here. Uh, zero here. Oh, no, no, that, that will work because these are string values by default, so they're not going to be uh, a string of zeros anyway. So we should be able to do this like this. Uh, let's say other test cases here. This should lead to an error, this particular test case. Unexpected end of file is exactly the one we want here. Can I just say that though? Testing expect t error equals uh, tokenize. <laughs> tokenize. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, exactly this one. Yeah. Um, let's remove this syntax error and see if we can do this. No. Okay. We could just do this. Uh, And that should work. Let's see here. Expected root color pair foreground got nil um, in 2.30. This test here, we are not returning anything here. Our color is not anything. Okay, let's see what we can figure out from this, right? 
why would we be returning nil? I mean, it could be this, but we are uh, checking for uh, errors, right? Let's just say log debug f here. Are we reaching this one? Log. We also have to have, of course, a logger. <clears throat> so. We read a this FFF, obviously. In which case was this exactly? That's 248 there. 234 is the one we're interested in first, right? This is not kosher. We're returning nil here. Somehow we're ending up with nil for that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. let's let's uh, go into that first, right? Let's see here. How could this happen? We're obviously not actually reaching anything here. We haven't gotten gone into this one, I guess because we're clearly like we're printing the source token in fact which only happens after this right we're not hit hitting the panic we have set this foreground here Ah, here we need to return our root color pair, right? I suspect that's it. That was it for that one. Okay, now we can basically remove this debug if and concentrate on this error, right? We, we, we're getting a, an expected token error here. Which I guess is actually fair. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Now that I think about it, that is actually the better better error because we do have the comma, right? And so what we're expecting here uh, should be expected token error. Testing expect t. Actually, we can do expect value here, I guess. And expected token. Expected token. Expected here should be a string. Let's say a specific token is expected.
Let's just do this actually. And here we can actually just do expect like this. There you go. That's all fine. Uh, this should run with silent true, by the way. I see now. Task file. Let's see. We obviously have not turned that on. I think we can just do this. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's those are some tests for parsing the group color. Um, there is one more test I kind of want to make here. The success test tokenizer uh, for double. Actually, we can do this one. Let's do, do this one. All right, because we want short, um, short long. Uh, we probably probably want what, a test here for only short. And the good thing here is we can generate most of these, you know. say this I mean this should also be a, a case that is valid and normal okay yeah I, am. I like this I think that's actually a good um, set of you know uh, expectations and so on and so forth I think we should be fine with that now we want to parse group names uh, and that has a few shapes, but really it's probably not going to be that. Let's just verify that the, our expectations actually work here in terms of, you know, what the, um, um, what, <laughs> uh, I, oh, hang on. T is uh, testing. <laughs> I don't know what we were doing there. So, so here though, um, the actual parsing of the group name. Yeah, this is now tied to colons, right? And that's maybe not really what we want but uh, th these group names no no they will be used oh no uh, we have to change that expectation here because we want to use this function in many different cases actually so let's now okay there are there's a a thing we could do in fact we could actually say hey new lines also work we could also say R and R, um, like this you know so here we have a name this this is just gonna be a group name here um, Sure. Actually, we could here, like, let's actually say that this delimiters um, is this. And here we don't need equals, that's pointless. Um, for the in delimiters, 
and we could also say names name 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 with sub scope These seem like reasonable choices to me here to, to test, right? Um, let's just add more, I guess. Camel case name. Like this. And for every case, like this, right? Uh, we want to actually run this test effectively. Um, I think this would maybe do it. Let's see. Let's see what we have to do here. Constant strings. Well, I, to be honest, I think that is a constant string, but um, I guess. Um, you're basically a little bit correct, I suppose. I mean, the names here are strings, which are not necessarily constants in that sense, right? So what we could do is just say concatenated is equal to strings concat Now, the tricky thing here is how do we test this? I, <laughs> like, we have to test that the fail or that the actual test fails, right? Otherwise, we're going to have a bad time. And clearly, here that we are actually, we should be fine uh, effectively. Let's see. But yeah, so now we can effectively add more like types of names if we want to here, uh, and these should all be fine. Uh, I think maybe that's a good place to kind of stop. Um, you know, um, I implore you to you know walk around a little bit between the videos and stuff. Maybe try out some stuff if you feel like it and so on. Um, I do think that we are on a good kind of track here. Uh, feet add parse root name and parse uh, parse highlight parse group name and parse color is it what is he here parse group color is what it is in fact okay uh, that's it for this one moving forward we're gonna tie some of these pieces together and see what we can actually do uh, very soon we'll probably have something that basically parses the actual thing and we're gonna write tests um, input and output tests for those things uh, so we're going to take basically one file and verify that it, the output from that file matches some expectation other file right? and so on. So I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now.